Do you want to learn how to sketch faster using constraints within Fusion 360? Coming up. Hey, I'm Tyler Beck. I'm going to be covering constraints today. So what are constraints? You can think of them as the duct tape to your sketches. Your sketches are going to run all over the place. You can drag them, you can stretch them, you can move them. But the more constraints you apply, it's just putting duct tape everywhere. And that means no movement, but it also means you're building in intelligence. Should you use dimensions or constraints? It's a good question. And the rule of thumb, do constraints whenever possible. In fact, I basically do those first. So how would you describe the part to someone? Let's look at this example. So how would you describe this little plate? Or perhaps it's just a washer, right? Square washer. So, so looking at this, I would guess it's a square. So the sides are equal. I've got a circle in the center cut out. So this, the center of the circle should be centered in regards to the midpoints, to the midpoints of this square. So how many dimensions did I just place? I haven't placed any and you already know what I'm talking about, right? So the goal was I'll make all the sides equal midpoint relationships and get that circle in the middle and then I'll drop in my dimensions. How many dimensions does it take for this example? One dimension for that diameter. I used this construction or center line to run across the diagonal from corner to corner, dropped it right in the middle, and then I've got a length of one of my sides. So sim similar challenge, what if you had four circles, excuse me, you had four feet that you had to place on your plate. Great, I got them. I have four feet. Well, to explain it further, there are four feet that are all the same diameter and same length. Okay, then I'll use relationships. I'll select. I'll, I'll select those four circle entities and make them equal. Now, I haven't defined the diameter of any of them, but as soon as I define one of them, that should be adequate to give them a diameter. Great. So what about the placement? Well, I'd like them an equal distance from each corner, and I'd like it to be symmetrical. Many ways you could do this. You could do this with dimensions. I'm going to just use some lines, some construction, I'll use those construction lines and I'll even drag it to, to match up with my diagonal running construction line. Make it even easier. And now when I locate this to that point, it's now an equidistance. So I could drop in one dimension, say that's 0.5, and now it's fully defined in its location. What if I was if I was being stingy with my dimensions and I wasn't going to let you finish the sketch without it? How could you get away with putting this together? It's pretty simple. These center points of these two circles line up with each other, so they're horizontal. When something still moves, it's got some play. Okay, so how do we finish this off? Is it gonna require another dimension? Again, if I would probably just drop a dimension in now, but if we're going for the exercise of no dimensions, a really an oversimplified sketch even, I could select these two construction lines and make those equal. And that pulls these into place. And as you can see, we're missing one more relationship. Which one? When I drag it, it only moves left to right, which tells me I want them to line up vertically from center point to center point. There we are. So how many dimensions did I use for this plate with four feet? Looks like one side dimension, a diameter, and then an actual length distance here. That's it. Three dimensions. Pretty amazing. And the best part about this, this is now an intelligent, faster sketch.
So a few years back, a buddy of mine, he continued to email me he needed help with his CAD models, and I wouldn't even look at his models anymore. I'd say, yep, your sketches aren't defined, you're not using constraints. And it became a running joke with us, but as soon as you open his sketch, you'd have a bunch of dimensions and that was about it. And as soon as you drag things, everything would go wild. So here's his model that he sent me, or something similar. And when I looked, there were a bunch of dimensions on it. But he didn't do himself any favors when it came to sketching. He didn't use any of the intelligent sketching or any of the constraints as he went. So when he sent me the email, the request was, Tyler, how do I get it to scale? I want to make one change. I want the whole thing to update. In this case, when I update the model, it does not scale, right? To do that, what was he missing? Well, this was supposed to be tangent. At both sides, he should have used maybe perhaps the fillet tool. It would have been cleaner. This was supposed to be centered with regards to the arc. Same for this one. These arcs were intended to be equal. This was supposed to be centered as well. Lots of different ways you can center, but my favorite is just drawing a construction line from midpoint to midpoint, making it go vertical. and that drops it into place. Looks like this thing's not even flat anymore. It's supposed to be. Okay, what's missing? Well, I haven't defined that height, but that's about it. Or that distance. I like to select both using my command key in the Mac, control, Windows. And make them equal. Okay, so it's all black showing that's fully defined. So if my friend said, hey, we need it to scale. It looks like it's going to scale with the intent that I built into it. Okay, so as you can see, constraints can help you sketch a lot faster, not just by saving you time doing dimensions, but what it can really do is build in intelligence into your designs. Hit me up with a constraint question on this video, why not? Thanks for watching.